At the start of Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul makes a statement that he is done working his way to being righteous. He's done trying to earn his salvation. He, he's tried his hardest to be right and good, and, and he's tried harder and harder, and it just hasn't worked. He, in fact, he makes a statement that he's counting all of that as lost now. It just was useless. It didn't do him any good to try harder to be better all the time. It just had no good result. When you hear that, you might think, well, okay, if that's true of Paul, then that's true of me too. And if I can't just try harder and be better, then I guess there's nothing for me to actually do. But that's not true. In fact, in the very next verses, the Apostle Paul outlines something that we can do to help ourselves. We can't earn our righteousness, we can't work our way towards salvation, but what we can do is guard our hearts. We can guard our thinking. We can make sure that we are focused on the right things and on the right path and trusting the right things rather than the wrong things. That's what Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 15 talks about, and that's what we will study this week. The sermon is called Adjusting Your Approach. Three Vital Commitments for Your Spiritual Journey. I'm going to give you three things that we actually can do, not only can do, but are supposed to do, that will help us in our spiritual walk and will help us connect to the real righteousness that's found in Christ and not the fake one that we make out of self-righteousness. Adjusting Your Approach is the title of the sermon. In our Bible study at 10 o'clock, we are in 1 Samuel 26. If you read 1 Samuel 26 ahead of time, it'll sound really familiar to you because it is almost exactly identical to 1 Samuel 24, which we studied two weeks ago. It's not, it's not exactly the same in every detail. In fact, the story happens in a different place, and there are other people involved, and, and lots of details are different. It is not the exact same story, but it is very similar. It is another story where David has the opportunity to kill King Saul, and he doesn't do it. He doesn't take advantage of an opportunity that's given to him just because he can. And so, once again, we will learn some lessons about David. We will learn some lessons about... Uh, honor and integrity and doing the right things even when it's difficult. Uh, we will learn a little bit about repentance and what re real repentance looks like and what that means. There's a lot of things to talk about. Um, if you enjoyed the story where David cut the corner off uh, Saul's robe, you will enjoy this story too because it is almost exactly the same. In fact, I've entitled it, Repeat After Me because it repeats a lot of the same lessons. You know, for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, it seems like every week I get up and say, there's a lot of people away today. A lot of people are gone. Please pray for those who are on the road. And, and that's been true. I mean, lots of people have been traveling in summertime and all, right? And even in through the first part of the school year, lots of people have been away. But this past Sunday, it seemed like a lot of people were home. The, the church building seemed more full than it normally is, and, and even better, uh, we had new people with us, people we'd never seen before, and, and, and that's been true the last couple of Sundays over the last month. So um, I went home Sunday afternoon just feeling really good. It was so nice to see so many people. It was nice to see new people excited about the Word of God and what we're doing and uh, feeling welcome here, and I just went home feeling so good about things. I share that with you just to say, I'm looking forward to this Sunday now, too. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you this Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing who else shows up this Sunday. If you've been away for a long time, this is a great Sunday to come back. We're looking forward to seeing you. It'd be great to catch up and rejoice with you again. And if you're thinking about inviting someone to church, this would be a great time to do that. Uh, two or three weeks ago, we had a new family here. We had a new family here last week. There's new people coming. Uh, new people uh, are welcome and will fit in well because there's other new people around. So if you're thinking of inviting someone, this would be a great Sunday to do it. The lesson will be really, really practical and uh, 
and I think they'll get a lot out of it. I'm looking forward to Sunday. We'll see you then.